Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. This video is a part of the particle tracing module and in this video we are going to talk about dielectrophoretic separation. Dielectrophoretic separation is an important technology which is used in micro and nanotechnology. Mostly this particular technology is used for separation. So dielectrophoretic separation is based on the principle of different kind of polarization of dielectric materials. So in a layman language, if we have two different material, their dielectric permittivity is different and so their polarizability. So due to different polarizability, induced charge dipole moment becomes different for two different materials. So with an applied electric field of similar strength, two particles may experience different kind of forces and that can be a methodology, a logic for separation. So let us look at the physics of the problem. There is a blog which is written by Comsol itself which is fantastic and we can actually learn about this dielectrophoretic separation from this blog. Before I talk about this blog, I would like to make an announcement. We have recently started a service where you can contact us and fix a video call and we will be trying to help you to develop your model via video call. If you want to take this service, then kindly write to me in the email ID given in the description box and also we have opened a WhatsApp group and I will put the link in the description box. If you want to have a discussion with the other members, then kindly join the group. So now let us proceed with dielectrophoretic separation and see the magnitude of the force density for a particular in the presence of a particular electric field on a dielectric particle or a dielectric material can be given by this form small f is proportional to the rho and e. So you know rho is the charge density and for dielectric material these charges will be the induced charges. So because they do not have free charges and that's why these charges should be the induced polarization charges. Now how exactly does that induced polarization charges appear? So as the term suggests, it is induced. Induced by what? Induced by the external electric field. So the charge density is again a function or it is proportional to the applied electric field having a constant and this constant is epsilon. So rho has a relation of, I mean rho is proportional to E and E is a, epsilon is a constant. So if you replace this rho in this particular equation that is equation 1 they are getting this particular form where f or the force density is proportional to e square where epsilon will be a proportionality constant. Now this is the force density so the overall force may be a kind of surface integral over the surface so in that case what will happen? Your proportionality constant may change but the entire force term will be again proportional to the square. So after doing uh, this, after uh, making the calculation for the net force, it appears as F is proportional to the epsilon and the gradient of the E square. And this gradient is coming because we are converting the force density into force. So from this conversion, we are actually getting the gradient. Now this equation 4 you can say is the sole form for the dielectrophoretic force because this force is coming due to the induced charge and induced charge can can be seen only in dielectric particles and this particular force is nothing but the dielectrophoretic force. Now 
what if we want to calculate we want to quantify this force on a particular particle so in that case what they have taken is so in a more stringent derivation we instead use vector value relationship for the force on an electric dipole so if it is an electric dipole then it has a polarity and or the dipole moment and if the dipole moment is p then the force will be given as p dot gradient of e so this is a kind of more explicit form and they have a relationship for this dielectric moment or the dipole moment and that dipole moment is equal to this so dipole moment of a spherical particle in the presence of an applied electric field capital E is equal to the surface area 4 pi rho r p square kappa into electric field vector so this is the term p and it will have a dot product with the gradient of e so here they have shown it and ultimately it gives a kind of form like this 2 pi r p square kappa into gradient of e square so this is the explicit form now this electric field can be again varying with respect to time if it is varying with respect to time then a kind of average electric field can be taken and we generally take root mean square average electric field and so this is the generic form where you have a time varying electric field and this is a kind of uniform electric field there is no change with respect to time but actually uh, we work in the AC domain that is the alternating current or alternating voltage and in that case you know the voltage always changes with respect to time so we always have a RMS value and again if we do some mathematical manipulations or algebraic steps then we get the final form and the final form is this now we'll see this particular force in the comsol file so initially let me talk about the physics which they have taken and also the about the geometry if you look at the geometry there are basically two inlets i guess yeah this is the inlet one and this is the inlet two so the purpose is we'll put i mean the material will come from these two inlets and when it goes out from the two outlets the two different things will be separated out and one object may go from this outlet and the other object may go from this outlet now what are the objects they have actually taken so they are actually assuming those things as red blast red blood corpuscles rbc and the platelets so in a physicist language there are two materials whose material properties are different whose permittivity are different and as the permittivity is different it will experience different forces so as a physicist we should look into this aspect mostly it is not about rbc and platelet it is about what are their material properties so if you go to material you can see in material they have actually taken those properties and those properties will be used when we will be doing this particular simulation so the creeping creeping flow model so it's a kind of micro channel flow and that's why the flow will be kind of laminar zone and that is why you can assume creeping flow as already mentioned you have two different inlets and the velocity inlet velocities are actually defined in these two inlets where you can see this inlets ha inlet has higher velocity compared to the other inlet and we have these two outlets now if we go to particle tracing for fluid flow so what's happening 
the fluid is passing through this micro channel and this fluid contains a few particles and those particles are RBC and platelets. So you can see in the particle tracing module they have actually defined the red blood cells by their properties. So all the properties are enlisted and also for the platelets you can see this platelets they have again defined the properties so rho p dp1 and all those properties are enlisted in the parametric table so you can actually see their sigma properties that is the conductivity epsilon is the permittivity so permittivity of both the particles are defined here so p1 is for platelets and p2 is for rbc so you have sigma p1 sigma p2 epsilon p1 epsilon p2 so all the properties which are required for the simulation are systematically enlisted here now in the particle tracing module we should put the forces what are the forces acting so obviously there will be drag force from the fluid flow so we have taken actually they have taken the drag force then the heart of the story is this particular term which is dielectrophoretic force and they have you can, you can see they have defined the forces in a different manner so what they have done is for the platelets a different force is taken different force means the properties will be different and that's why they have actually quantified the forces from two different nodes this node is for the platelets and this node is for the rbc but if you see in both the cases the simul the equations are similar and from this equation they are actually calculating this fdep and in the presence of drag force i mean the resultant particle flow will take place then what is the point of using electric field because it is a dielectrophoretic separation as i have mentioned many times there should be an external electric field that external electric field will cause polarization to the dielectric particles and in the presence of polarization it will have an induced dipole moment and it already has a gradient of electric field and the dot product between the induced dipole moment and the gradient of electric field is the force. So quickly if you see we have a higher potential applied here that is 5 volt and it is at minus 5 so alternatingly the potential is changing. This is the insulation I mean rest of the boundaries are insulated so it basically solves for the electric field then from the electric field this force term is calculated because these two are integrated coupled once you have the information of the electric field then only you can pass the information here and it can calculate the dielectric forces now once this dielectric uh, dielectrophoretic force is calculated then it can actually solve for the particle dynamics equation i have talked about it multiple times so this is the particle dynamics equation for the fluid flow where you have all the forces kept and the forces are coming from here we have different studies the study one is stationary it only solves for the creeping flow and then we have study 2 with no dielectrophoretic force so for comparison they have done this particular study so here you can see there is no dielectrophoretic force you can, you can see this dielectrophoretic force terms are disabled so initially they have solved for the without dielectrophoretic force and then they have included the dielectrophoretic force and they have again solved so here you can see we are solving for the particle tracing for fluid flow so again if we go here this is for the creeping flow 
in the frequency domain it is solving for the electric current so the stationary study is to solve for the creeping flow and also to solve for the electric field now this creeping flow information is again coupled with the fluid flow i mean particle tracing module so if you see creeping flow the dependent variables are in the creeping flow you have u v and w and this is integrated here if i show you yeah you can see here the u velocity field is taken from the spf that is the single phase flow here this is creeping flow so this u is actually coupled with this fpt so then i am not running the simulation uh, because you can quickly run it and see the result but let me try to run maybe the stationary one will not take much of time so i'm just running the simulation and pause the video yeah it is done so you can see this is how the electric field is distributed and might be the creeping flow is also solved yeah this is how the fluid is flowing if you remember this stream had higher velocity so you have higher velocity at the bottom and this particular stream had lower velocity so you have low magnitudes here now let us let us not solve with uh, with no dielectrophoretic force let us go ahead with the dielectrophoretic force so i click on compute again it will take some time we'll pause the video you can actually see the simulation how it is moving so the particles both the red rbc and the platelets are coming and you can see under this electric field those two particles are getting separated this red rbc is coming from this channel and the blue one is going here so this is a beautiful simulation where they have demonstrated how exactly this dielectrophoretic force can be used for the separation so yeah the simulation is done here so this is how it is separated now if we look at no dielectrophoretic force then we can also see how exactly the non separation takes place no separation so the particles are coming as a mixture there is no electric field so you can see it is going out as a mixture so we don't have any separation so today i stop here i hope this video was helpful if it is helpful i would like to request you to subscribe to our channel so that we get more motivation to upload videos thank you